Hello and welcome everyone to Flickr Effect, a podcast where each week we chat about the world of film, television, and pop culture. This is episode number 190, and we're recording on Sunday, October 16th, 2016. I'm David Lott. Joining me this week is Bobby Jackson. Hello. Yasha Wilson. Hey, hey, hey. And Michelle Cree. Hey, everybody. How's it going, guys? It's good. good. Awesome. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. 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 Yeah. Wait, what? Sorry. I said it's good. <laughs> good. It's funny. I, I, I didn't quite uh, understand that either. All right. It wasn't just me. It's good. It's, it's good. funny. It didn't realize. I didn't like. It didn't like hit me that we're at episode 190. So that means like at Christmas, it's gonna be like a 200th episode. Bobby, yeah, Bobby no, and I have cool? had this conversation. Uh, uh, there, there's, yeah, the ti- the timing of 200 could be interesting. Is that's, that like our top 10? That's all I'll say. It could, it could be interesting. <laughs> oh. But yeah, we're almost there. That's awesome. 190. Right? Exciting. Damn. Going I've done, along I want to say I've done 190 of these, but I know now I've missed a couple. So. Mm. Mm, true. Yeah. But I've been here for most of them. <laughs> <laughs> that's true the extreme majority of them <laughs> yeah someone yeah. had to start this whole thing it's cool and then really those first few episodes we labeled them betas so really mm. i've done more yeah yeah if you do the math yeah yeah mm. i guess so it's true whatever or, sorry, and I'll... if you don't if you if you count the i mean since you don't count the other ones that we do like bonus episodes and stuff like that so and then news effects it's all really those been a lot yeah it's yeah. been it's been a lot but anyway i'll stop boring everybody by talking about that so what's up guys plenty to talk about this week um bobby you've got some dr strange footage you saw this week we want to talk about want to hear about um we've all yeah. seen some movies we've all seen one movie in particular we have all seen the accountant which was released this weekend um and hey since we all saw the same movie why not bring out our old friend which no one can see because this is audio and I don't have the audio for this poor guy. I'm sorry, but it is the bowl of destiny. The bowl, the bowl of destiny. Thanks, Yasha. Perfect. That's awesome. pretty good, Yasha. Why do I even bother recording those things? I'm playing. I don't just know. get Yasha to do this. <laughs> My pleasure. I'm here to help. <laughs> so yeah, we'll start off talking about the accountant and uh, we'll see who gets to go first here by asking the bowl and let's do this. Michelle, are you ready? <laughs> <laughs> well, Lord knows it'll be me anyway. So Sweet. Yeah. It's perfect. You can see that I'm not cheating. No, I know. Okay. <laughs> no, I know. I'm okay. looking right at it. All right. <laughs> I kid you not. It's Michelle. <laughs> like, do you yes. feel around for the name with yes. those letters no. in it? Is that what happened? I swear I didn't. <laughs> Oh, I hate that that's bowl. Classic. That's oh, it's cool. the best. I love it. You know, the I worst part it. is like I really wasn't even quite prepared. Like I kind of have my opinions, but like I don't. I usually try to keep like IMDb or something up, so I don't like completely just butcher people's names, and I don't just sound like a complete idiot. I don't have any of that prepared. Oh, you got this. We I just want to hear what you thought. You we saw this movie together. We saw it uh, yeah. Friday night, right? Yeah, Friday night. Yeah, that was um, Friday. So, hey, what did you think of the accountant? Yeah. You've been looking you know, forward to this one. I was actually. I was really looking forward to this one because I feel like I spent so much time waiting for Ben as Batman. <laughs> I'm like, I need something different from him, you know? And I was really happy with his performance in Gone Girl. And I don't know. I was looking forward to another, like, really good Affleck film thing. I don't know how to really describe that. Anyway, so The Accountant. Um,. I guess the best thing, I'll just be honest, I'll go with it. It was long, and I'm not that impressed or amazed by it at all, actually. I didn't <laughs> dislike it. Like, I didn't hate it or anything. I didn't think it was bad, but it really didn't do a lot for me, actually. Um, I, I feel like it was like the, the pace was really lumbering, and it just kind of... There's a lot of like, oh, that's... Yeah, I figured that would all eventually kind of do that. And I don't know. It was just, just, I don't know. They just didn't work for me. I can't even really pinpoint exactly what it was. I think it was just the pace and the script. And I feel like the story was, in a way, slightly predictable. And I don't know. I thought Ben did good. I like everybody that was in it. I feel like their performances were well. I wouldn't use the word strong, but they were well. They were good. They were well. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, 
I don't think their characters really demanded a lot from them. I mean, maybe Ben's a little more so than anybody's, obviously, because he's playing someone with at least Asperger's, if not somewhere completely on the autistic spectrum fully. Um, but yeah, uh, I really don't have a ton to say. I mean, like I said, I didn't hate it, but I definitely didn't love it. And if anybody hasn't seen it out there, I would say you can definitely wait until you're looking to rent something one night uh, on a Tuesday evening at home. Cool. That's my takeaway. That's... All righty. Wow. I know. Wow. So negative. <laughs> so negative. And short. Usually I'm so like yeah. long-winded on these things, and I'm like, eh. So negative. Meh. Oh, my gosh. I'm, I'm really surprised. I'm really surprised. Really? I, I kind I of am, am too because I was I looking forward to this one. I really was. Like, I there's so many people in here that I like. You know, you've got John Barenthal, John Lithgow, uh, Jeffrey Tambor, J.K. Simmons, Anna Kendrick. I mean, there's a lot of good people in it. Uh, let's see, we've been directed this. Gavin O'Connor. Yeah. Uh, it, by all accounts, I should have enjoyed this film more, but I just I just didn't. <laughs> so, yeah. Alrighty then. Uh, who's next? Bobby. Oh, all right. You got next, buddy. What did you think of The Accountant? Well, I'll just say going into it, my expectation levels were probably middle, in the middle of the road. Because I know Yasha seemed to be the one out of the, all of us that was the most amped up to see it. Like, he was really anticipating it and just really looking forward to it. Whereas I've been looking forward to it, but not, it, it wasn't deep on my radar in terms of just making sure I knew exactly when it was coming out and, and rushing to go see it. So I had every expectation that I was going to go see it. I just didn't know exactly what I'd be in for. And what I got was something that was very predictable. Like I could see everything that was going to gonna kind of happen. Um, if not sometimes moments before it happened, then sometimes way earlier than it happened. And so it was just kind of like, all right, well, this isn't really anything particularly special in terms of uh, what they're doing with the story. But, oh, my God, did I love this movie. I had so <laughs> much fun watching the movie. It was just like seeing Ben Affleck like, kick ass was just, ah. Uh, it was like that feeling what I got when I watched Matt Damon kicking ass and Jason Bourne or seeing Keanu Reeves kicking ass and John Wick. It was just like he was such a badass in this film that I'm hoping that they do more movies with The Accountant and I'm hoping like they start to really get crazy with it and do The Accountant versus Jason Bourne and then <laughs> do The Accountant versus Batman. Wow. And then, I mean, it was just so good. I, I loved it so much. And I had no idea that going into it that I'd feel that way coming out of it. I mean, uh, it's like, mm, it, it hit on a thing that I wasn't expecting it to because it starts off one way and then it almost kind of dovetails into this action kind of movie, which was unexpected. And so that kind of really got me flowing in terms of what I was um, not knowing to expect from it, just with everything else going on. So um, I think Ben definitely had the, the, the most, to do in terms of what his character called for with the autism. But Anna Kendrick was kind of just Anna Kendrick in it, which was fine, but it, she wasn't really a focal point in it anyway. And just the stuff that we saw within uh, Ben's character was just the, the stuff that amazed me and, and his background when we would go and visit his uh, in the past with, with the um, when, when it flashed back just the the stuff how he, how he had to deal with things as a kid it was just all so much I, I guess fun and unexpected that i really really enjoyed it a lot and like i said i can't wait to see more and hope we get all of those crossovers especially maybe a um one with like uh punisher and and <laughs> the accountant I'm, I'm telling you i'm seeing all these different things in my head oh, as i'm man. watching it because he's i would love to see how the accountant matches up with some of these guys because he's he's so lethal and it's so cool i, I love seeing movies like this so uh that's a big thumbs up for me a plus all the way I, I really enjoyed it a lot cool we will see if he ever joins the avengers <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
And uh, who's got I, next? I doubt that. But... Yasha. I swear, I don't. I don't plan this shit. The ball. I okay. See, I watch. I see. I see the name tags come out. See him laying out here, all ready to go. I guess I'll go ahead and put my name next. I still, right, I still can't get over the fact that the bold destiny just loves throwing loves me down. You. I think one time I've not gone first, like once. Maybe when Carlton was here. Like, like ever. I think it's the one time I've like never. It's. I mean, you. I could take this to Vegas at this yes. point. <laughs> all right, Yasha. I know you've been looking forward to this movie as well. Uh, what did you think of the account? I I was. And I and you know to think about it like I think I was more excited to see this than I am excited really to see Rogue One which is kind of blasphemous in this wow. group I understand that but I I don't know why but I was just really amped to see this movie and when I went in and everything that Bobby said you know it was predictable it was you know you can kind of see everything coming like if you're looking in the numeric order of things it's like okay one two three four like kind of just a, almost a checklist as to like where things were going to go and yeah i sat there and watched it and pretty much predicted how things were and i was like oh, okay well this is going to happen this and this is going to happen this and this is going to be connected to this person and you know what i still freaking loved it i loved every minute i thought the movie was so much fun I thought Ben Affleck's portrayal of this character was so twisted and just so methodical. I, I really just enjoyed it. Like his, even his sense of morality to, you know, how he talked to people, how he dealt with people, how he interacted with people, how he didn't really know how to interact with people. I thought it was great, man. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, it was a little slow in some parts, like Michelle said. Um, but for the most part, I really did enjoy it. Like I could probably sit through it again, maybe not in a theater, but if it were to come out on like DVD tomorrow, I would definitely just sit back and just watch it on the couch. Like I really did enjoy this movie. I thought like, like Bobby said, it was like, you know, it was an A for me. Like I really enjoyed it. Um, John Barenthal, JK Simmons, Anna Kendrick, who I'm not a super fan of. I mean, they all played their roles very, very respectively well. Jeffrey Tambor was amazing. John Lithgow, and as John Lithgow, I, I mean, I've always been a huge John Lithgow fan. Like, that guy's amazing. But their characters, they all really worked very well together. And when they interacted and when they didn't interact, and just the storyline, I, I enjoyed a lot of it. I thought it was a fun movie. Ben's portrayal of this, you know, almost like social outcast and pariah just didn't really know how to deal with things. They're great. I, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, the, the movie was... Uh, I think is, you know, if anybody wants a good kind of like action movie and see Ben Affleck go out there and kick ass and see if he can really do it. Yeah, he can really do it. And he really did it. I thought this was a fun movie. Cool. I guess that leaves me. Man. Um, Hit us with it, David. Your powers of deduction it. are staggering, I David. know. Wow. All right. Thanks. Uh, so you got me left, Michelle. Am I going to side with you or the other guys? You probably go with the guys. Uh, why do you say that? I don't know. I know, right? You never know with David. Sometimes it depends on his expectations of something going in. So you never know. I, I'm curious. Yeah, I never know with David. And the thing is, is he and I, we don't discuss the film after we see it. Even we see it together. Like, we won't really talk about it all that night. Maybe a few times I think we barely like, liked it or didn't like it. And we'll just give that much information. But we'll never really dive into it. Right. Yeah, and we then, didn't talk about this at all. So. Yeah, sometimes I can tell from his mannerisms that he liked it or didn't like. Like, if he didn't like it, you can kind of tell. But I really couldn't tell after the film, like, so I have no idea. So he could literally go either way at this point. Man, I love the suspense. Is it really yeah, any know. suspense? No, there's really not. No, no. Um, so yeah, the accountant. Uh, I will say uh, when it comes to my expectations, Bobby, I kind of feel like uh, the same as you were saying. How sure I wanted to see this. I saw, remember seeing the trailer and we talked about it. And I, I'm a, I was in, but I wasn't like you know, man, when is this coming out? I can't wait, kind of thing. Didn't buy my tickets away ahead of time or anything like that. I mean, so even though I was you know wanting to see it, I wasn't like some big film on my radar. But uh, yeah, saw it Friday night. Um, I, w I will say too, I'm a fan of Gavin O'Connor just simply because of Warrior. I really enjoyed Warrior quite a bit, which he directed. But uh, yeah, The Accountant, I enjoyed quite a bit. <laughs> I, I gotta say, uh, um, 
I don't know. I just had a really good time. It was in terms of, you know, maybe pacing like uh, the first part of the film was a little slow and I wasn't sure what to make of it at first in the first 15 or so minutes, first 30 minutes. But it, it definitely got way better. And uh, I don't know. I just I had a thoroughly enjoyable time watching this. And in terms of seeing it again, which you talked about, Yasha, I could totally go see this again in the theater. Like no problem. Like tonight and i would like to uh i had a fun time watching ben affleck kick ass in this and um it 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 felt of course somewhat like a superhero movie of a completely different type and that was nice and it felt a little different than anything i've seen in a while and yeah i don't know i i would definitely say if anybody asked me go and see this in the theater for sure I thought it was an enjoyable time in terms of predictability in the movie. I mean, everyone's pointing to the fact that it was predictable and I'm not saying I didn't predict anything myself, but I don't know. I always, and you said this about a film last week, Bobby, I don't know. I always feel like I really make an effort to not try to predict anything as I watch it. And then Mm -hmm. I just thoroughly enjoyed everything as it happened. And I didn't find in particular that I was predicting things way ahead of time, but I wasn't trying to. So, and I don't know. That's all I can say for that. Um, But yeah, I don't know. I enjoyed it quite a bit. I enjoyed the performances. I thought Ben Affleck did a great job in this. And I always particularly like Anna Kendrick, even if she's always Anna Kendrick. And I think that's great. So I'm all for that. Um, But yeah, I don't know. I... I really like the accountant. It it was, I'm not saying it's going to like make my top 10. Who knows? Maybe it will, but I'm not saying this is a, you know, an Oscar worthy film, but uh, I liked it a lot. (laughs) So I'm at the point where I feel like I don't need to see any more born movies, but I want to see more accountant movies. (laughs) Right. Yeah. (laughs) I really feel like this could take over the baton and, and, you know, start the, the marathon this way because, the Bourne movies still, you know, like maybe they've kind of hit a wall or so, but this feels something along the lines of what you feel like when you're watching Bourne, but just a different sort of way and the different ways they can take this character and, and show him, um, you know, his growth or whatever, especially the way it ends. It's just uh, a lot of different ways they could go with it. And there was, I mean, without spoiling anything, what, what, one of the things I really liked about the movie was his fighting style i don't even know what it what you would call it but it was interesting the way he was fighting there was one particular scene when he's fighting a dude in the bathroom and he does some move where he kind of like hits him and then he uppercuts him and then he smashes him into the sink and it was just like it was so brutal but so fast and i was just like oh i got i I, that alone made me like i gotta see this movie again just to see some of the fighting that was going on in it because it was so like intense and brutal and, and fast paced. So I, I just really, like I said, enjoyed it so much. And like David, I, I would go see it again tonight if I could. Yeah, the the mixed martial arts fighting style was, I will say, was really good. Like you can tell, like Ben really had to prep pretty hard for this one as far as training goes. And then one, I will say, as weird as it is, one of the things I really enjoyed were the farmhouse scenes. Like, I like the fact that his character is kind of a sharpshooter. And, you know, he's not just relying on, I can beat somebody up with my hands. It's, the dude can, he can lay down some bullets (laughs) exactly where he wants them. And it's awesome. Like, it was kind of, that was kind of cool. Like, I feel like sometimes in action movies, it kind of gets away from that. People are just shooting to shoot. And it's like, no, 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 he's, Shooting was a very serious purpose. I don't know. It was just interesting. I like. I did enjoy that part, as weird as that is. Right. Cool. Not weird. Yeah, I thought the fighting was a lot of fun, and it was you know very well laid out and very methodical. And I just I enjoyed the overall history of his character, his social awkwardness, his wanting to deal with people but not really knowing how to deal with people. I thought that was all really well done. Agreed. And, uh, yeah, again, I recommend anyone listening to go check it out if, uh, if you haven't yet. So yeah, the account, I guess three pros, one not so pro, (laughs) but, um, moving on, uh, Yasha, you also this week got a chance to see Kevin Hart's what now I'm so jealous. I did. I did. It it was okay. Uh, I mean, I guess maybe I'm, 
I guess maybe I'm more apt to seeing his older stuff because I mean it's basically you're paying to go see him do some stand up, mm-hmm. and there was parts of it that were really funny. But I found myself getting a little sleepy at some parts, maybe dozing off. And it's not like I didn't get enough sleep last night. I didn't really do anything last night. Um, the funniest parts to me of the movie were his behind the scenes where he was interacting with all these celebrities and this card game, and you know he was kind of like this super si- super spy type character. Um, those are fun. I like watching him interact with other celebrities in like, it's supposed to be some sort of like behind the scenes kind of documentary where he is almost this, just this annoying character and everybody is just annoyed with him and his success and his success. Um, but I mean, it was, it was fun. I mean, it was fun to see, you know, him interact with like Holly Berry was in it. Um, uh, Don Cheadle. I mean, there were a lot of really big names that you're just kind of like, Whoa. Um, what are you doing here type of thing? And it, it, it was, it was kind of fun. I wouldn't recommend going to see this in a the theater. I went and saw it when it was, you know, matinee price, six bucks. Um, but it was, it was just okay. Like, I mean, it was, I, I like, maybe I'm just more apt to enjoying his older stuff. So I really got a chance to do that. And I like his older stuff a lot and I'll still go see him to a movie role. Like I read that they're going to be doing, um, Russia, uh, not Russia, right along three. I'll probably go see that when it comes out and support him because I think he's a funny guy and I think he does good work. So, but as far as this goes, it kind of missed for me. That's too bad. You know, I forgot to mention something else too, that I did get a chance to see. I don't know if I, if it's all right, if I bring it up, of course, did you guys see the movie or tagline for mascots on Netflix? I have not even seen like a trailer or anything for it, but it, uh, funny enough, I mean, being on IMDb right now, it's come up as an ad around things I'm looking at. Uh-huh. And that's the first I've heard of it was this evening earlier tonight. I, okay. I happened to notice um, like, hey, it's the guy from uh, Silicon Valley's in that. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yes. I got a chance to watch that. And I thought it was a television series that they were doing. I was like, oh, this is going to be really funny. And it turned out it was, um, I don't know why I thought that, but it was a, it was a full length feature movie hour and 40 minutes not as funny as i would have expected it to be Aww. i really feel like they had a lot of wasted talent in that film well now wait um wasted moments in that film with all the talent that they had in the movie like i mean they had i mean a lot of people that are really really funny when you let them do their thing and there are moments that was really funny but for the most part i was kind of disappointed in the film overall I got a buddy of mine who was really interested in seeing it as well with the Silicon Valley guy in there and whatnot and seeing how he performs. And you just kind of like, um, yeah, all right. And you just kind of like, it was kind of underwhelming is the best way I can put it. I was like, oh, there were some funny parts and some really dark moments, but it was, you know, I think it missed a little bit. I list missed a lot of opportunities and that kind of bums me out. Bummer. Um, well, I also saw another movie this week. Shocking. I saw two. Wow. Oh. I know. I know. Um, I saw a documentary, uh, City of Gold. And I don't know if any of you guys have heard of this. Um, I hadn't heard of it until I was perusing Apple TV, I want to say, a couple weeks ago. And I happened to notice it was like a editor's critic's choice pick on there. And then I happened to notice it's available on Hulu. So, hey, I was able to watch it without paying for it. So I'm all for that. Um, it's a documentary about Jonathan Gold. He's a food critic for the Los Angeles Times. Um, he's actually back in 2007, I think it was. He was the first uh, food critic or some first person reporter to win the Pulitzer for food criticism. And uh, he tends to focus a lot of his reviews on smaller, more ethnic restaurants in Los Angeles, but he does apparently cover all types of cuisine. And uh, I enjoyed the documentary quite a bit. Uh, I will say, yes, it is a documentary about a food critic. So it may seem like, oh, it's just about food. But really, for the most part, this movie is about Los Angeles. And it really is a love letter to L.A. And um, being someone who lived there for a little while, I only lived in L.A. for two and a half years. Um, and I am a person that in, I did like LA quite a bit and I didn't leave LA because, you know, I had any problems with it. That definitely wasn't the case. And I mentioned that cause I know LA is one of those towns that definitely has a, a mix of opinions. You know, you sure you get a lot of people that love LA, but you get a, a lot of people that don't. 
and uh, I definitely fall in the, the you know the group that you know likes that city. And you know, watching this, it made me miss LA a lot, and it also made me really upset that in my time in LA, which was brief, I did not eat more food like this. <laughs> I like, think you know, sure, I you know I now tend to you know try to find more indie restaurants, and I don't really you know usually eat at franchise type places. But you know, I think in my time in LA, I probably ate at a lot of places or you know bigger places and the food in this i'm just like holy shit man look at all of the food i missed out on while i lived there it's really unfortunate <laughs> but uh yeah i don't know it's a it's a really good documentary i recommend it um it's you know like i said it's on hulu so if you're a hulu user you can watch it for free right now i don't know if it's available on any other services it might be like amazon um but uh, it is definitely available on Hulu for free. That's the only one I know about for sure. So I I would recommend checking it out. I, it was it was quite good. I perused it, you, saw it on them. Amazon, but it's for rent only. So. Oh okay. So maybe Hulu is really the so only Hulu one that's free, free right Hulu's now. Hulu the free if one. If you're I guess a Hulu subscriber yeah. or what have you. David, can you give me the name of that one more time? City of Gold. Was the Thank film. you. Sorry about them. Yeah, came out in. Uh, it looks like it came out last year sometime. But uh, yeah, I enjoyed it quite a bit check it out nice moving on uh bobby you got a chance to check out the doctor strange preview that happened this week um i think we all kind of talked about doing it but bobby's the only one that actually went and <laughs> um i can tell you exactly when i checked out of that well, I, I, can re- know why I remember I it was two weeks ago when we talked about it on the podcast and i think you checked yeah. out yeah yeah that was that, that was that moment that was that moment right, right. There. Um, so yeah, there was an IMAX preview for Dr. Strange. I mean, obviously Bobby, you can talk about the details more, but from my understanding what they showed about 15 minutes of, of footage and you were able to check it out. What'd you think? Exactly. So it starts off pretty much with Benedict, Benedict Cumberbatch. He comes out in, in like a studio and he just introduces the fact that they're going to show a clip and, uh, or some of the scenes from the Dr. Strange film. And he does this. Uh, thing where he's like, oh, and I'm going to expand the the size of the theater. And then as he makes some hand movements, the screen aspect ratio widens so that it shows you more. And so we kind of get um, some scenes with Doctor Strange before his accident. And then they show in a little bit more detail the, the actual accident, the car crash. And then from there we really get um, more more or less an extended version of what you see in the commercials when he's going through these different dimensions. And that was sort of the, the whole purpose of going to this IMAX showing because what you see in these visuals are so stunning and so out there and weird and psychedelic and trippy that it's it's it makes it so that you feel like you really need to see it in IMAX 3D because I know that once we kind of finish that whole wrap up of showing everything the crowd definitely seemed way into it and they loved what they saw myself included it was just visually it was unlike anything I have seen in terms of uh, being in that setting because with IMAX 3D, there's a lot of different things that can go on and can go wrong when you see a movie in that format. And sometimes they don't lend themselves to being in there other than they just want to sell more tickets because they're in that, that screen, that, that uh, larger theater. But this really does do something to heighten the experience of seeing the movie. And I would absolutely say if you're the type that really doesn't do well in 3D motion settings, you definitely don't want to see um, Doctor Strange in, in that format because there's absolutely some stuff going on when he's uh, going through the different dimensions that could probably make some people feel a little nauseous or, or get a headache or something. But for me, I, I really thought that was like the the piece of the pie that really just was the best because it, it was like so stunning visually i mean it was just i don't know any other way to describe it and i know i'll see it in that format matter of fact i already have my ticket for the imax 3d but i'm pretty sure i'll probably watch it in regular 2d as well but 
I definitely felt like after seeing that footage, I had to see it in IMAX 3D. So I came away very impressed. And it actually made me, because of the other scenes they showed, it actually made me even more excited or reignited my excitement for the film just in general. Because for a while, it's just been sort of like at a at a steady level. I haven't been anxious about it. But then after seeing that and the stuff that looks like we're going to get in that movie, it really made me anxious again and excited to see it. And anyone that's kind of worried about the stuff that they show in the commercials as far as it looking like Inception, I mean, it Inception has not been on Doctor Strange <laughs> when you look at the visuals in this movie. It's just pretty sick, and people are going to be in for quite a surprise when they actually go see it in the theaters. Sweet. Yeah, I still need to buy my tickets, but uh, I guess I'll do the IMAX thing. I guess that'll happen. And now I guess talk after talking to you about it, I will do a real IMAX because uh, at first I was like, well, they didn't shoot this on IMAX. So I can go see it in IMAX. And there's some AMC theaters. I could do that, but fine. I'll go to the one real IMAX theater in town. It's cool. But anyway, uh, another thing happened this week. Um, we got a new Rogue One trailer. So, um, did everybody actually watch it? Yep. Yes. 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 Good. 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 Um, <laughs> I feel like I should use the bowl again to talk about. I, I think so. You think, so? think so? All right. Yeah. Sure. Uh, Michelle. Michelle is ready to see, see if we can do this again. Like let's <laughs> let's just while you're while you're picking the second person, let's just go ahead and cut the middle one out and just Michelle, you go ahead and go first. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll and then we'll go ahead and pick on who's going to be the next person after. Mm-hmm. I want to say there was a second ago where I thought Michelle was she took the bowl from me and I thought she was maybe examining the pieces to see if she could figure out how I, <laughs> I was do like, this. I'm wondering, I'm like, is he like feeling for the name with the most letters in it? Like... <laughs> I think she's trying to see if this is like a magic trick. <laughs> No, no, I know it's, I mean, I could tell like it's totally random. It's just even when it was paper, like that's what was happening. Like yeah. th- it's the bowl of destiny just likes and it always does it. Oh, gosh, I seriously think I've only been not chosen first one time. Yeah. Ever. All right. Well, let's see if it happens again. Oh, God. I got one in my hand. Yasha. Yay. Oh, Yasha. no way. <laughs> yes. You first, buddy. <laughs> okay. I don't know what to say about this. Um, let me see if I can verbalize correctly here. I am excited to see the movie. I am interested and I'm looking forward to seeing this movie. I actually had a long talk with a couple of people about this. Nobody on the podcast about this movie and what was being released. One of them is a huge, actually both guys are huge Star Wars fans. One of them, I just know, I just met the guy at the gym, but he has a whole collage of tattoos on his leg of Star Wars, Darth Vader and stuff like that. So I just asked him randomly. I'm like, Hey man, what'd you think of the Rogue One trailer? And so then we had this whole like 20 minute discussion right there in the gym. There's a buddy of mine that I've known pretty well. He has the Rebel Alliance tattoo on his forearm. So he's a pretty big fan. And we both kind of had the consensus of the feeling is like we're excited to see a story that doesn't revolve around the Skywalker family. But at the same time, I kind of feel like it should because when we meet Vader in episode four, he is this huge presence and almost reputation of just being the most evil, badass person in the world. Now, one person that I spoke with said that he doesn't think that, my buddy John doesn't think that Vader will have that big of a role. I think, and I'm hoping the quite the opposite, I'm hoping that he has a, we get a chance to really see what makes him so evil and so bad. Now, we kind of got a taste of that in episode three, um, when he started killing, you know, the Jedi and hunting down people and stuff like that, that, but it wasn't necessarily clear as day as, you know what I'm hoping that we get now like now we're past the grieving part and it's him just kind of roaming this the galaxy and just like taking people out you know the building of this this death star and you know he's really working at making sure that this you know empire takes over everything and I'm really hoping that that's what we'll see I really hope that we don't get another whole you know mentor mentee type relationship or with this father daughter relationship and the only way that she gets the the plans is because on his last dying breath he gives her 
the plans and says, you do, do what I couldn't and, and make it, you know, so that the rebel Alliance can have this to destroy it. No, I really hope we don't see that bullshit because if we see that and I'm able to predict it that far in advance off of a trailer, I'm going to be pissed, but this is really long winded. Sorry about that, but I'm, I'm excited. I'm interested. I'm looking forward to seeing the movie. Um, Am I probably as excited as my, my friends here on the podcast? You guys, probably not, but I am definitely looking forward to it. I just hope that we get a chance to see um, a lot of Vader, uh, some of Vader, some of why Vader is so badass, and, you know, get to know some new characters and see why they're badass, too. Cool. All right. Who's next? Uh, Michelle, now you get to go. Uh-huh. Uh. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm I, excited for the film. I'm looking forward to it. The trailer didn't add a ton more excitement because for me, I think I'm... I mean, it's happening. I'm going to this film. Like, There's just no question about it. So there's a small part of it kind of didn't really want to see the trailer because I kind of feel like, you know, the, the film is what it is at this point. Like, I'm going. Like, it's happening. Like, I don't need... I don't need any further information or really a lot more visual stuff. Um... But on the same note, there's things that I really enjoy. You know, like there's a shot where they go over the planet Jedha. I always say it wrong. I like I think I always say it wrong, I guess. I don't know, but it's cool because there's like an old statue of a Jedi like half buried in the sand. I was like, that's pretty sweet. Like, I don't know. That kind of got me excited. And then like the last shot, you know, with Vader. It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's kind of cool. I don't know. It's it's neat. Like it's just, I don't know. It's it's mo- a little more information. Whether or not I wanted it or needed it, I don't know. But I still enjoyed watching it. And that's really all I kind of got out of this trailer. I wish I could be like, oh, it's changed my life, but it hasn't. But I liked it. It's good. I'm still excited for the film. Cool. Cool. Still gonna see it. All right. Cool. Uh, Bobby, I didn't. Somehow I'm still picking myself forth, but Bobby, you're next. That's how it goes. Okay, I was like, am I next or are you just going to go and pick me next? No, no, um, he, he pulled it. I pulled it's, it's it out. You. It's you. He just, okay. he just didn't, make any, so. he didn't make any grand Sorry. like gesture of, okay, who's next? <laughs> okay. Um, man, it surprised me. Sometimes I feel like when we talk about Star Wars on this podcast, that ha- doesn't have anything to do with the main series. When we start talking Rogue One. I start to feel like maybe I'm tripping. Maybe I'm the one that's like not. I, I'm I'm just overhyping it or something. Because I saw this trailer and I was so freaking excited and happy that I was just over the, over the moon about it. I mean, to me, it was just like it it was everything I wanted to see, and it felt like if this had been the only thing that they had released and the first thing they had released, I wouldn't need to see anymore because it did such a good job of really telling people whose story this is, that this is about Jen or so and her, her, how she became into the, the rebel Alliance and the, the plans for the death star and how, how they were formulated and the idea of trying to steal those plans and seeing Vader knowing that it's, prior to episode four and maybe getting to see him in action. It's just for me, everything about it that we've said before about the other trailers just is again, amplified in this trailer where you get to really see this sort of like boots on ground kind of level of star Wars that I've never experienced before. That's never been seen thematically before where I mean, you don't see ATSTs walking through the street shooting up, you know, you know uh, like uh, uh, like a little village or something. Before it's just, it all just feels very, very real in a way that Star Wars hasn't quite felt before because of the nature of everything else that goes on in Star Wars. And we still look like we get some space battles as well. So this just feels to me like it's going to be something very special in in terms of the star wars movies that we've ever gotten before and hopefully they really stick the landing because everything i've seen in the trailers has made me excited every time and a little bit more every time i've seen something and i can't get enough honestly it's like if they kept releasing more trailers i would probably keep watching it because i'm just fascinated i'm just entranced by the footage that i'm seeing it just looks so so 
incredible, the, it, gorgeous, beautiful. Like the the way it, it's shot and just the the action of it. And I don't know. I just I honestly I can't get enough, and it cannot get here soon enough. I'm so freaking hyped for the movie. It's just it's insane. I'm, <laughs> I I really can't wait. I know it's just right around the corner, but it still feels like it's forever away, and I, I'm just excited. So I'm going to shut up now, and I'll let David talk about it. You didn't leave anything for me to say, dude. <laughs> like, uh, no, Sorry. the bowl picked you first, and I guess that's how it goes. I guess I don't get to say anything else because pretty much Bobby covered it. Uh, as Bobby and I have been saying this whole time, we've obviously been playing the same tune whenever we talk about Rogue One that uh i've been also crazy excited for this from the first time i saw footage and it hasn't changed any as these trailers have come out i mean yeah you know i kind of felt somewhat like you michelle when the the, when i knew the trailer was coming out like oh do i really want to watch this one like not because i'm trying to like avoid anything but it's you know it's getting close now and i'm like hey i'm i'm already excited about this but you know at the same time like I've loved every frame of footage I've seen just not even for the plot, but just for the way it looks that I'm like, well, I I have to watch it. There's no way I'm going to ignore this. And I didn't. And yeah, it still looks great. And, um, I, I, I don't know what else to say that Bobby didn't just cover. The only thing I will say is, you know, the only reason I'm probably not bouncing off the walls with excitement is, you know, because of the drama that seems to have surrounded this movie, it, whether it's warranted or not, whether or not it's all bullshit or whether or not there is some real drama around the production. But I mean, if it weren't for that, I would probably be losing my mind over this film. Like if if pretty much all the buzz around this was the same kind of buzz we had surrounding Force Awakens, where pretty much everybody was like, this looks awesome and it sounds like it is awesome. Like this, I would even be more excited than Force Awakens, like probably easily just because it looks so good and it looks so different. And then that's not to say I have a problem with the with the normal episodes of the saga. I think those are great, too. But it is nice to have something different every once in a while. It's the same reason I always yearn for the type of Star Trek that we got when we got the 2009 J.J. Abrams Star Trek. Like, I love old school Star Trek, but seeing that was so different and it was great. And I I loved it. And that's why I've been excited about this. The only thing I fear, of course, is, you know, the things we hear about, well, Disney maybe didn't want it to be so different and they're trying to make it a little more like, you know, the other films. And I hope, really hope that's not the case. Like, I really hope that the movie we end up seeing is really the movie that, you know, was made originally and the original vision because I want it to be different. I don't want it to be like the other episodes. Like, you know, that's why you're doing these different stories. So, right. um, yeah, I guess, David, I don't mean to chime in, but it's like, I, maybe I would be as excited as you're saying if, if the rumors around the film weren't as, as they have been. Right. And, so. But still, you know, I see the footage and every time, you know, we go into a new trailer knowing the stuff we know about the production, but then we watch a trailer and I'm just like, but God damn, it looks so good. Like, I mean, there's no doubt, you know, you can make a trailer look amazing and we know very well the movie can still suck. And sure, there is a possibility this movie could be terrible. And I have a hard time believing it's going to be terrible. I think, you know, maybe there's a possibility it'll be not as good as I thought, but it just, I don't know. Uh, it just, it looks incredibly good to me and I, I can't wait. And yeah, again, if it weren't for maybe some of the drama, I would be more excited for this than I would have been for last year's movie. I mean, visually it does. I mean, I, I am enjoying the visuals. I'm enjoying them for what they are, but it's also, there's a, a richness a depth a layering to a lot of what we're seeing in the trailers especially in anything that has anything to do with a fight sequence there's just so much more and it's a crisp yeah it's a crisp like depth to this shot and and you see that in the trailer like it's it's incredible and yeah visually this should be an absolutely stunning film and so yeah i mean i'm excited like i feel like i don't want to say that that I'm not excited because I am, but this trailer didn't like do anything additional for me. But it is fun to watch. It's fun to see more stuff. But I might be good. Like I'm, and it's just I feel like it's around the corner. I really feel like we're just 
the way this year has gone, everything's gone so quickly. And I'm just like, man, this is happening really quick. Like, it is coming up, kids. Like, before we even really fathom, I think it's, it is upon us. Oh, yeah. It's almost here. We're, we're two months away. I want to say if it was like exactly two months, like just a couple of days ago. Or, yeah. It, so, it, so we're. We're almost there, I know. and it's about to happen, and we'll finally get to see whether or not all this drama was warranted or not, or if this is actually a great movie. So, uh, yeah. Right. That, and this is really the final trailer. Sure, there's going to be other TV spots and stuff, but this is really Little it tweaks on in it. terms of you know the footage we're seeing. Right. And now we just get to wait for two months and and then check it out. Um, so we all saw a movie in the theater this week, obviously. Is there any other trailers anybody saw that wanted to talk about or because I, I didn't i didn't really have any others i mean i feel like the trailers that i'm seeing at the theater haven't been anything new that i haven't seen gotcha. which is surprising but actually just a little before we started i saw the one for bleed for this with miles teller in it and aaron eckhart okay um it's apparently it's based on a true story i don't really know much especially when it comes to, like the boxing world i really know very very little but uh i don't know uh yeah it's it definitely caught my eye it looks interesting uh it's about a boxer who apparently is coming up in the, in the boxing realm in the world and an accident happens and it's about his story about looks like fighting back to get back to some level of some kind i don't know but miles looks uh, it's, it's intriguing to see because i feel like for the most part when he takes on a role he looks like he's really he really changes himself physically and you can tell his personality. He really gets into the characters. And so I, I just from this trailer, like you could tell, like he's really, he's all in, he's down with it. And, um, yeah, for a person that doesn't really like watching boxing films <laughs> or right, right. that kind of, I guess, genre of sports film, mm-hmm. this is intriguing to me. I was like, wow, it caught my eye for sure. Cool. So, Yasha, I think you I'm saw it though. You. Yeah, no, I've seen the trailer a couple of times, and I'm with you, Michelle. Like, I am super amped to see this movie. Like, he looks like he's just going to murder this role. Yeah. Like, I mean, it looks so intense and so good. And I, I'm I'm not a huge boxing, like, fanatic. Like, it's not like I'm like, oh, yeah, well, this is true. And, you know, I'll be this historian piece when I'm watching the film. And, like, you know, he did this right, and this is right, and this is wrong. No, I'm going in there blind just like you. It's just I'm going off of strictly his performance and the actors that are in this film and it looks really damn good yeah it does yeah i don't think i've seen this trailer uh no. i mean it's funny because like looking at the poster and the description of everything and everything you're saying i'm like i feel like maybe i'll watch this but i obviously don't remember that well so i don't think i did yeah <laughs> so yeah i'll have to check that trailer it's out. kind of stand out ish yeah i was like wow i have a like, feeling if i'd seen it i'd, I'd remember <laughs> yeah yeah but yeah and uh aaron eckhart's in it and he looks kind of unrecognizable at first like it took me a second. i was like oh my god is that aaron eckhart <laughs> like wow yeah i mean look, seeing looking wow. at the pictures of him here yeah he definitely doesn't look himself not not his traditional names. not his traditional you know All right. debonair lovely no <laughs> i was like well that's interesting yeah that movie's coming up pretty soon november 18th yes november 18th week before thanksgiving yeah looks like it cool any other trailers guys anybody have anything? No, I don't think so. Yeah, I got one. Oh, okay. Oh, Bobby's got one. Bobby always finds like sometimes I feel like he always finds these really great mainstream ones like before anybody else hears about them. But then he also hears about these really other ones that are like off. I'm like, where the hell did you find this or hear about this <laughs> movie or trailer? Like, geez, you're in the know, well, Bobby. This, this one isn't actually a, a trailer for a, a movie coming out. It's actually a trailer for a Netflix series that. I've talked about it in the past, and it's called Black Mirror, and their new season is going to be coming out on Netflix this Friday. And for those who are, who don't know what Black Mirror is, Black Mirror is, it was this show that originally started on Channel Four, I think, in the BBC, and it was sort of like a a Twilight Zone, a New Age Twilight Zone, but it centered around technology and how that can kind of uh, act as, a, as as sort of a, a foil to mankind and it had these very clever short pretty much 30 minute episodes of um, themes centered around technology and and the uses usage of it and how it could um, sort of backfire on us 
and it was very well done. And they only did two two seasons, I think. Well, yeah, it was two seasons, but the episodes themselves, each season was like four episodes or something like that. So it's not like a long series because that's the way sometimes um, they do some of their shows over there. But it was so well done. And I remember the time when Netflix said that they were picking it up to make it a, a full series over on Netflix. And their episode count is, I think, I want to say it's like maybe ep- eight episodes for it, for their season. So that'll be coming out on Friday, and I'm I'm super looking forward to it because when I saw Black Mirror, it was probably one of the best things I had seen in a very long time. Considering how close and near to dear and near and dear to me Twilight Zone is, that having something on that level and of that caliber was super exciting. So I'm very excited to have that come back, and I'll probably binge that that weekend. I didn't, I didn't know you were so into Twilight Zone, Bobby. Yeah, it's like my number one favorite show of all time. Oh my gosh. Wow. I learn something every yeah. day on here. <laughs> <laughs> I will say as far as trailers go, like I haven't seen anything new, but sitting in the theater, I was thinking and David and I kinda of both looked at the other and kinda of rolled our eyes at the same time was the trailer for Hacksaw Ridge. Um, and which one was that again? It's the I probably, obviously I wanted to forget this one. It's the World War Two one. <laughs> oh that yeah. Have we talked about that on here? I don't think we have. No. That's why I'm kind of bringing this up. Like, well, maybe a little bit. I and I, I've seen the trailer maybe two other times, but yeah, I'm sitting I've in the theater. I'm now. sitting in the theater and I'm watching it, and I'm just like, I have zero, and I do mean zero desire to see this film on so many levels. And I'm watching it. And I'm like, oh my god! And then they have the date for when it comes out, and I'm like, well, that movie is is way the fuck doomed <laughs> like on so many levels. It comes out the same day as uh, Doctor Strange. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm like, that weekend's going to be... Good luck with that. Obviously going for a different uh, audience. um, Clearly. Programming. Clearly. Yeah, but um, yeah, you know, you and I talked about this. And I mean, the big thing for me, I mean, not only am I just, I hate to say not particularly interested in the story, but I, I enjoy Andrew Garfield's work quite a bit. I think he's a great actor. And I'm not saying that his accent in this is bad. It's not necessarily bad, but there's just something that feels so like unnecessary about it. You know, it's like, I don't know what it is. And I feel like that's even bad to say. I don't mean anything negative about that. Like anybody with this kind of accent, I really am not trying to say that, but it just, I don't know. There's just something about his, his super strong Southern accent in this. And I'm just like, I don't know. I'm just, it's not for me. Like, yeah, just, I really was less than zero interest in seeing this movie <laughs> yeah i mean like and that was one thing i said was his accent for me i think he's playing somebody from tennessee and tennessee kind of has a weird twang to it but he's like overly developed this this sound that comes from the back of the throat when they do this southern accent and it comes out and it just hits a nerve in the back of my head behind one of my teeth and it just makes me ping with <laughs> so specific pain. Yeah, like, and it's maybe, really bad. And I, and I like Andrew. And I have nothing against right. Andrew, but it's just it's like he's almost like overdeveloped this Tennessee Southern accent to a point that I just can't I can't sit through. It. I can't do it. And maybe what it is too is that I mean I say that it doesn't necessarily sound bad, but I mean being someone who has grown up in the South and hearing these accents all the time, like maybe I'm so used to how they should sound that when I do hear his, that Probably. I can tell that there's like a subconscious part of me that's like no, wrong, not right, not this does not sound good. Right. <laughs> like you, you know, not, this is not real. There's nothing natural about this, this is, whatsoever. This is not a natural voice this person <laughs> speaking is no like right. just uh, no. So uh maybe that's what it is. Maybe it is just bad and I'm not willing to admit it, but it's it's, it's something about it does not work. Right. And I, I mean I kind of wish maybe this could have been a movie without it and something more natural. I mean obviously you wouldn't have gotten an actor who is I mean he's British, right? Yeah. So yeah. like I don't know, but but no. In no. the end. Yeah. This will be well, a big I, no. <laughs> I kind of feel like I didn't really notice that accent or the issues with it just because I've not been around it enough to know. And I can be pretty forgiving when it comes to accents unless they really sort of, I don't know, kind of go all over the place in terms of how it sounds like one minute it sounds like it and then the next it doesn't. If it's consistent, then I'll just pretty much go with it. But I think on the strength of what really makes me want to see this film is the fact that it's directed by Mel Gibson. 
and it's been so long since he's done stuff. But I mean, Braveheart is like my number one slash two film of all favorite film of all time. And I mean, just the things that he's done in the past, if you just separate him from the stuff that he's done and his his work, it's like he's got such an impressive resume of movies that he's done between Braveheart and between uh, Passion of the Christ. And then uh, what was the other one that was in the jungle? Um, The the like the and Aztec one. Yeah, I I never saw that. Mm. That was it was really good as well. So I I say what you will about the man, but like he's done really great work. And so I'm really anxious to kind of see it from that perspective as what kind of movie he's putting out with this and and, and how it will be in terms of uh, another movie in his in his filmmaking career. And if this will be a movie that kind of brings him back into the light the spotlight again right. as opposed to a lot of the antics that he's done so yeah, yeah um that's kind of what, where i met with it uh, it looks interesting enough to me i mean there's some things in it that i guess i'm kind of like uh, i don't know if how historically accurate it is specifically when andrew garfield pulls out a spider-man kick and kicks the grenade away kind of thing but right. i don't know yeah but, yeah there's something <laughs> about that shot that i went ah! <laughs> yeah i mean aside from that but i i am kind of interested to see it though and i mean like looking forward to this weekend i am looking forward to the sequel for jack reacher but there's another yeah. film that i'm looking forward to and i really shouldn't but i totally am i'm really down for it like every time i see a trailer i'm like i should not want to see this film and i totally want to see this film and it looks ridiculous and exceedingly predictable oh, and dumb but I totally want to see this because I could really use just a stupid laugh. And that's um, Keeping Up with the Joneses. I knew you were going to see this. Oh, 100%. 100%. I totally want to see this. Totally see this. The other one it I kind of want to see. It looks like so much fun. I know. It looks like so much fun. It's just like, okay, mindless, silly comedy? For sure, sign me up. I'm all in. Let me see John Hamm just go to town on stuff and be yes. funny. The same thing with Zach Galifianakis. And I would love to see if Gal Gadot has like comedic timing. Yeah. Like, Lisa Fisher, we all know that she does. Yeah. And she's fantastic. So I'm right there with you, 100%. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's like I'm like, this is the most overly predictable comedy movie this year, I guess, in a way. But I, I, I so want to see it. I just want a mindless, silly, fun. I think it, I, I really, yeah, I'm down with it. I want to see that. And you know what the other one I kind of want to see? And this is a huge guilty pleasure of mine. Huge guilty pleasure. And you guys are going to laugh so hard. I do want to see Boo and Medea Halloween. Whoa. You want to see what? Medea's Halloween. Okay. Um, I'm going to have to sign off early. I have no desire to continue this conversation whatsoever. I'm such a loser. I don't know what it is. And like, I never usually see them in the theaters. I've, I've seen like two in the theater, but I, I'm i a big sucker for Medea. It's like my biggest like, guilty hidden. Pleasure. Guilty oh, pleasure. I love, love Medea movies. I don't know why. <laughs> I'm just a They're big funny. Sucker they're funny. Movie. I've watched a few of them, and you know they they have their moments where they're great, and they're just like, oh, this is laugh out loud funny. Um, so I can I can co-sign on that a little bit. I was just giving you grief. They're ridiculous, <laughs> but I enjoy one. them. You've never seen one? I've never seen one. Not, oh. not even a scene. Exactly. Uh, right there with you. <gasps> Wait, Bobby, you <laughs> haven't Tyler seen Perry. any of them? Just none, zero. Nope. I Dude, don't. you you actually should yeah. watch the 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 earlier ones are yeah. much better. The earlier ones the, are way better. Movie. Yeah, the like um, Diary of a Mad Black Woman, brilliant, really, really well written. That was hella movie. good. Yeah, hella I mean, good. so I mean, you should definitely check out some of the earlier works because the earlier works it was all from play to, you know, to screen. Like right. this guy. Tyler Perry is, you know, you got to give the guy credit. Maybe he's he's found a niche that works and he is making ass loads of money off of it. But he, I mean, this is a guy who is, you know, performing in basically church theaters and, you know, little um, little houses, not houses. Um, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? Playhouse? Just playhouses, thank you. Playhouses around, you know, cities and stuff like that. And his following just started to really enjoy this work that he mm-hmm. was doing. And and he just made a mint off of it. Yeah, I mean, I will say the earlier stuff is definitely better. It's written better and it's just done better. But and this later stuff has almost like an earnest 
goes to blank or Ernest does blank kind of oh, yeah. with the Medeas. Oh yeah. And at the same time, I kind of enjoy them, you know, like, it, like the whole Medea goes to jail, Medea's Christmas. And now we got Medea's Halloween. Like it's silly and ridiculous. And yet I, I still always kind of find myself guilty pleasuring it, you know, like on, on video, like to rent one night. I'm like, okay, let's get some popcorn. I'm watching a Medea. It's happening. Yeah. Yeah. So it'll happen. It won't happen in theater. It, I mean, it, yeah, it's been a long time since the has happened in the air for me, but I will eventually watch it. It'll happen. I know it will. I think the ones that you, should, if anything, you should watch, Bobby, are Diary of a Mad Black Woman yeah. and I Can Do Bad All by Myself. Those are two. Yeah. Uh, well, Medea's Family Reunion was really good as well. But that one but, was good. I yeah, like the first one. three were just. They were really good, especially Diary of a Mad Black Woman. But I, I remember, I remember seeing. Uh, the family reunion one in theater with my best friend on its opening night and we Whoa. went to the theater and it's just me and my girlfriend and the theater was packed and it was uh-huh. just, it was a lot of fun it, they're, they're, the originals were a lot of fun to see in theater like I don't know it's just a, it's just fun group theater experience I will say Cool. Uh, yeah. Sorry, I've got nothing out of this. Never David, seen one. David's like, David's like David's lost all respect for me. It's, it's all done. It's like, cool. Uh, you should see. Like, I'm like, you can't look me in the eye right now. No, no, no. It's fine. Uh, <laughs> He's literally not looking me in the eye right now. I'm guys. looking at notes. He's not looking. I'm looking up at box office numbers. I was going to talk box office numbers. <laughs> Oh God, I've lost all respect from David. It's over. So yeah, <laughs> real, really quick. Box office numbers. Uh, number one this week was The Accountant with uh, a little under $25 million. Uh, Kevin Hart's What Now was at number two with eleven point nine. Um, those were the two real big new re- releases for the week. Uh, at number three was The Girl on the Train. Number four, Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. And at number five, Deepwater Horizon. Uh, there was one other uh, wide release, new release, Max Steel, but that's way down at 11. So wow. let's not get too. Yeah, upset. Bobby, you didn't. Yeah, I'm surprised you didn't go see that one. Um, is there a reason why you didn't go see Max Steel? <laughs> Probably because when I do spend my money, I usually want to make sure I'm spending it on something I actually want to see, mm. and that just was not something that I cared to even spend a dollar on. So yeah, I had to miss Max Steel. Sorry, just, sorry, Max. Just didn't speak out to you. Did uh, it? I almost. I almost went to go see that this weekend. I almost it was either that or what now this morning, and I just I opted for what now. So I was really close to going to see it because the timing they were both starting at the same time, and surprisingly playing at the theater that I was at. I feel like you made a right decision. I I you know what I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I feel like I made the right decision. Oh, Kevin Hart. Um, and then before we leave, honestly, I wanted to mention one thing. Uh, I actually saw three movies this week. Um, though this third movie, uh, that I saw, I had seen before. Um, I just wanted to mention real quick because so, uh, backstory, my wife, there's a handful of Marvel movies that she still hasn't seen. And with Dr. Strange coming up, not that you necessarily need to see these movies before you see that, but I'm like, Hey, let's, let's try to catch you up on all the MCU stuff. You know, we watched, she had never seen Iron Man two. We watched that a couple of weeks or a couple yeah months ago. And, uh, last night we sat down and watched Iron Man three, which she hadn't seen. Um, and this was actually only the second time I'd ever seen it. Um, I only ever saw it once in the theater and that was the only time I had seen it before last night. And I just wanted to say real quick, uh, I don't feel any differently about it. I still don't really care for it. And, uh, you know, I went into it last night thinking, you know, this was a movie I remember, you know, we talked about quite a bit and I wasn't, I didn't feel like I was the only person that had negative opinions on it, but there seemed to be a lot of praise, especially critically, for that movie and i remember just being very confused by that because i'm like i don't what did i miss something so you know i go into it last night thinking well maybe i did maybe i'll enjoy it more this time and actually i think i liked it even less than than the first time Mm. i saw it and i mean you could you know you may lose your mind for me saying this but if i had to sit down and be like you know what i want to sit down and watch an enjoyable movie or something what will i enjoy more if i sit down and watch right now will i enjoy iron man 3 more or iron man 2 more i would probably prefer to watch iron man 2 i would enjoy that more than iron man 3 i'm gonna be honest like i still do not understand why there seemed to be a lot of praise around iron man 3 i just don't understand at all you know it's funny because i've only sat through the whole film one time yeah and I didn't like it. And then I kind of sort of watched quite a lot of it, believe it or not, at San Diego Comic-Con. 
Okay. Uh, the Starbucks that we would go to <laughs> over at the Hilton. Oh, yeah. They would was, always have TVs on. With, they had yeah. TVs on and they always had a movie going on. And mm-hmm. I feel like every time the I went was, in there. The line was long enough that you pretty much could oh, watch a You can watch movie. like 35 minutes of a film. <laughs> oh, oh man. God bless that Starbucks. Those people working there were working hard. But like, <laughs> I mean, I mean, I, at one point I went to get coffee for me and David and like bottled waters because we all got to need to kind of refresh for the day. And I was gone for a while. And yeah, I must have watched a good 35 minutes of Iron Man 3. And it was the whole end scene, basically. And I'm watching it going, yep, still don't like it. Don't like it in a Starbucks. Don't like it in a box. I will not have it with a fox. I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, I, I do not like it. <laughs> like it's, it's bad. So, yeah, no. I'm fully in agreement with you, David. I mean, sure. I still enjoy watching Robert Downey Jr. as Tony Stark. I mean, Who doesn't love Robert you Downey know, Jr.? I mean, it's got that. So, yeah, I mean, does, totally I'm not saying it's it. necessarily bad, bad, but I mean, it's just not for me. I don't know. So, yeah, we watched that last night, and she's still got a few more we got to watch. Next will be uh, Age of Ultron, and then we have to watch Ant-Man, and then Civil War. She still has to see all those. Oh, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah. Cool. So, anyway. just We should have her on the podcast so she can review those movies. We should. We should have her on. We should do that. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, we're going to try to watch those before Doctor Strange, so we don't have a lot of time, but we'll, we'll throw them in there. And uh, yeah, I guess with that, uh, I guess our time is up. It's time to get out of here. Um, as always, we would love to hear back from you guys listening. You can let us know what you think of the show. And if you have any questions or comments for us by emailing us at feedback at flickereffect.com. You can also call us at 407-308-5509. You can leave us a voicemail there. We may play it on the air. Um, you can also find us on Facebook, Google+, Twitter, YouTube. You can find links to those accounts on our website. Just look over on the right-hand side. I'm David Lott. I'm Bobby Jackson. I'm Yasha Wilson. I'm Michelle Curry. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.